Hello, my name is Idan Cantor from Dell EMC. Today we're going to talk about the coupon for VMs 5 to 1. We're going to cover deployment, replication to AWS, as well as recovery. First, uh, in order to deploy RP for VMs, we'll deploy the VRPA OVA. Select the OVA. Rename it. I'm going to call the cluster Venice. So let's just pick a meaningful name such as Venice RPA1. Select the AJ cluster to run that VM. So there are three virtual hardware specs to select from, which is going to go with a 2x8 here. Select the data store, select the management network, configure the VRP management IP. And finish. Now I'm going to fast forward through this till this is uh, this is done. Let's bar on the RPA. Then I'm going to fast forward through the deployment of of uh, the second RPA, and finally power it on. After we're done, let's uh, navigate to the management IP of one of the RPAs, in this case, RPA1. This is the RP VM's web-based deployer. So we'll go um, into the install VRPA cluster wizard, put in the vCenter creds, connect to that VC and then we'll run pre-validations which have been successful as you can see. Put in the cluster settings, we're gonna call it the Venice. Um, admin pa password must be changed. So we're just putting in the password here. Changing the time zone, putting in an NTP server Really, really important to make sure that time's all synced up across uh, clusters and the right timestamp for points in time um, is created. You're gonna mark the second RPA here and, and, and select uh, share data store for the repository. Now RPVM support five different network topologies for the VRP Vinix. Over here by default, we're using the WAN, LAN and data We'll select data network, configure the cluster management IP, configure the, the data IPs for the RPAs. The management IPs, we're automatically retrieving them as, as uh, we deploy that uh, through the OVA. And that's about it. Deploy, I'm gonna fast forward uh, through this. This takes usually a few minutes to complete. During this process, we're pushing out the splitters and the plugin. And the splitters are being pushed to all of the nodes where the, where the VRPAs are at, or nodes in that cluster. Plus the deployment has been completed. We'll go back uh, to the deployer. You're gonna see the cluster has indeed been uh, deployed successfully. And then we'll connect clusters. Now we're gonna connect it to Tokyo uh, that I've just deployed before recording um, on this demo. So just another fresh cluster. Uh, I'm gonna put in um, the WAN IP of one of the RPAs there and its admin password. Connect will first make sure that we can reach 
um, um, that IP before attempting to connect. Once we've done that, we're doing the actual connection and all set. Go back to home page, you're gonna see that we're running a two cluster system. Awesome. Now we're gonna log out out of the web client so that the plugin can can appear, can be displayed on, on the web client. All users must log out in order for the plugin to appear. Once we've done that, we'll navigate the administration cloud services to register um, our cloud, our AWS account, um, um, as well as that three bucket, all the different cloud settings. First off, we'll register uh, data store for Snap, uh, Snap-based replication. That is on-prem, and we're gonna register the account. I'm just gonna copy-paste my uh, account credentials. Register the bucket. And finally, deploy the Cloud DR server, or CDRS as we like to call it. So first of all, it searches if there's an existing CDRS. If not, uh, we will deploy a new one. You need to put in as a domain um, password, and we'll deploy it with, and install. Now this uh, takes a few minutes as well. I'm just gonna fast forward through this deployment uh, process, but everything is fully automated, as you can see. All set. Now let's protect the VM. I have this Win uh, 2K16 PRD01 uh, running Windows 2016, obviously. Uh, so this is the Protect VM Wizard. Just going to name the, the CG. As you can see, we've done a lot of simplification around that wizard. So the VRPA cluster is automatically selected. You'll see more uh, selected automatically as we move through the wizard. I'm going to name the production uh, copy. The more advanced option here, such as VMDK exclusion and replication of hardware changes and macro replication and so on. And this, this VM we're going to replicate to AWS. Let's configure the replication settings. We're going to go with 15 minutes interval and I'm going to do one day of retention. All set, we'll click protect and start the actual replication. To check out this, this, the protection status, go to uh, the VM, configure, we can open for VMs. And this can be, of course, be monitored through the plugin directly. So as you can see, we have a connectivity issue. And the reason for that is that VM kernel ports uh, need to be created on the SXs in order to facilitate connectivity between the splitter residing on the SXs and the VRPA. And for that, there's a there's a auto VMK capability built into RPVMs in the plugin and REST. So if you go to administration, administration ESX clusters, you have a capability on a per cluster basis to auto create those VMKs. So in my case, it just I just uh, uh, clicked on the on the Venice cluster, select the vSwitch1, put in uh, IP pool range. By default, we're getting the solid mask from the VRPA data network. So you can associate a VLAN with those uh, VMKs we're just creating. And we're all set. We created one VMK per ESX in our two node cluster. I'm gonna refresh here and see what the connectivity status between the split and the RPA is. And you can see it's healthy. We're all, all set, good to go. Now we're gonna go back and see what the protection status is. So you can see that we um, started the initial sync. We're gonna fast forward through this. And uh, this may might take a while depending on the size of the VM. And we're applicating snap a first snapshot and snap idle. It is between replication cycles. Now once we're done, let's see how replication to an on-prem 
uh, copy in addition to AWS looks like. Now we're gonna protect uh, additional VM, Windows 2012 in this case, Win 2K12 PRD01. Gonna do Alma uh, next. Put a name for the production copy here. So you can see that journal's automatically registered um, as you've probably seen in the first, uh, first protection wizard. Gonna replicate to Tokyo. So let's configure that this first. Gonna stay with the default journal size. Gonna um, lower the RPO to five seconds. And select the compute resource automatically select as you can see automatically selecting the data store with least amount of uh, use capacity. And then configure the failover networks. And then we're going to add a copy, and it's going to be to AWS. This time we're going to keep the, the defaults of one hour interval and five days of retention. And we're all set. Going to protect. I'm going to fast forward through this. Let's see um, how it looks like replication status. Both of them started. We configured the VM kernel ports on Tokyo. That's why replication has started to Tokyo. You can see it's active for on-prem to Tokyo and snap idle um, uh, to AWS. Now we're going to go to the CDRS uh, UI in the cloud. For that, we'll go into uh, cloud services. We have a link there to the CDRS, which is an EC2 instance that we've previously automatically deployed. So this is the CDRS uh, UI. I'm gonna log uh, into it. I'm gonna do a brief uh, overview of how, what the UI looks like. There's a really nice, uh, there's a really nice dashboard here of the assets protected, cloud usage, health recommendations, and so on. Under protection, you can see all the protected um, assets. We have two VMs that we've protected here. I'm gonna go to recovery and do a test in the cloud. For that, we're gonna select a Windows 2016 VM. I'm gonna do test, select the point in time. I'm gonna use for that, we're gonna go with latest. I'm gonna select uh, the VPC that the EC2 instance will be associated with, the security group. We're gonna go to the activities to see what the process looks like. See, it's pending, it's gonna rehydrate and convert. The test is completed. Let's shift it to our AWS management console, go to EC2, go to instances and see that when 2016 is up and running. Great, so the only thing left to do is to end the DR test. This will terminate the EC2 instance. You can also promote to failover, we're going to end the DR test right now, and we're all set. With that, I want to thank you all for watching, and see you in the next demos.